Hi, good evening everybody. So tonight's live stream are for those of you who struggle with to post tendinopathy that doesn't seem to want to react to treatment. Now, I'm not going to cover all the possible treatments that you can do for it. Um, I've already done a video about that and I will post the link to that video in the description of this one. So have a look there if you wanted a more full um, or well-rounded explanation of what causes tip post tendinopathy as well as all the different treatments. Tonight's session is specifically for those people who have tried everything and it just feels as if it's not reacting. So these are the things that when I get a patient into my clinic that's been struggling with for a long time and doesn't want to react to treatment, this is what I find useful. Now, my name is Mareka. I'm the physiotherapist from sportsinjuryphysio.com where you can get online physiotherapy treatment for your injuries. Um, how the live streams work, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments. And if you have questions when you're watching this on replay, make sure that you tag me, then I'll come back and answer them for you as well. And you're always welcome to message me or email me with questions. Now, I've got to apologize, but Guy Fox is in full flow outside. So there's loads of fireworks going off the whole time. So it's not gunshots, it's just fireworks, but it's really annoying. Excellent. So the first thing that I look at for hard to treat tendons is what exercises these people have been doing. Now, the research in the last years have shown that for tendinopathies, where the tendon is actually in a breakdown phase, exercise seems to be a very good stimulus to get these tendons to recover again. And what's happened is people have been applying exercise therapy to all types of tendon injuries and not really checking if they're ready for it. Now, there are certain type of tendon injuries or tendinopathies that don't react that well to exercise. And those are the tendinopathies where the tendon is injured quite close to the bone and where there's a lot of compression against the bone. So examples of this is your tip post tendon, because if you think of it, it wraps right around this ankle and foot and it makes strong contact, especially on the inner bit there with your bones. Then another one that um, there's a lot of compression involved is your insertional Achilles tendinopathy. So for Achilles, you get insertional and you get mid portion. So mid portion, nice and far away from the bone, not really much compression there. Insertional, very close to the bone. This one reacts really well to exercise. This one you often have to offload rather to get to calm down and then start to load it. Also rotator cuff tendinopathies, often needs a period of offload and then careful loading. So for your tip post, I find that doing regular strength training exercises or stretches that places that tendon into a compressed position, even if it's not a lot of compression, can often keep the pain going. So if patients come in and they tell me that they've been doing all of these things, but it just continues to hurt, I often get them to actually stop all the, the like the band exercises, all of those things. I get them to stop all of that for a few weeks to see if we can just calm it down. And I combine that then with the right shoes and time on feet and everything I'll talk to you about in a minute. Um, the first exercises I get people to do strength training wise for this type of condition is often just the arch strengthening exercises where you're not actually turning the foot in and out. So you're not really get creating a compression component of that tendon onto the bone. You're literally just doing things like the grabbing a towel with your toes um, and holding on to it so that you can get to activate the muscles that supports the arch but you're not getting that compression component. So if you're doing exercises and you feel worse after it or a few hours later, just stop them for now and go and see a physio so that you can get the right advice for you because it may not be the right time for the exercise. If your calves feel really tight and you feel you want to stretch it, try not to stretch it because in that calf stretch position, again, you can cause quite a lot of compression of the tendon where it comes into the arch of the foot. A better option is to maybe foam roll it. I prefer to use a massage ball. Now, this ball won't work because it's too soft, but the dog has taken my tennis ball and I've given up trying to get it back. So I've taken the dog's ball. So pretend that this is a nice hard ball um, and I'll show you how, to, how I use it to massage. So oh, let me just shift around if I can. Now, if you want a hard surface like this, 
using a ball can be a bit tricky because it slips out. So I often find if I just put a piece of plastic underneath it, um, like my exercise band, it keeps it in place. But also if you've got an exercise mat, that works really well. Now, the tip post muscle runs kind of in the middle, a little bit more to the medial side, but in the middle of the calf. But all the other muscles can get tender as well. So actually, let me show you on this one if you can see it. So we want to massage all along that line and you can roll up and down the length of the muscle. Okay, so, but then you can also, if you feel really tender spots, you can just apply pressure in that spot and hold it for 30 seconds before you move on to the next. You can also do tiny little like um, movements just up and down on that. You can go side to side whatever feels good to you but yes keeping the pressure on one point for 30 seconds before you move on is a good way for the pain to to um, switch off now be aware that the tendon runs in this area and if it's a really inflamed sore tendon doing massage even if it's with your own ball over this bit can make it feel worse so be very careful when you do it and make sure that you check the 24 hour response of your reaction to that massage. If it feels worse or it feels more achy afterwards, that's not really what we want. So aim to massage the muscle belly. Try not to go right here onto where the tendon runs because that may make it feel worse. Um, other things that could be useful if your calf's feeling really tight is having a massage from an experienced therapist that knows not to dig into it too much or even dry needling can be quite useful to get rid of that, that tightness. But yes, my first thing that I, changes with my, with that I change with patients that come in with a lot of pain in their tendons that doesn't want to settle, is I often take all their strength training away and we just offload the tendon for a period of time. Doesn't mean they're gonna stay away from it forever. We will add it in later again, but it has to calm down to a certain level first. Now, the second very important thing is that shoes matter. And what I mean with that is two things. First of all, remember that most people get to post endonopathy because their feet pronate too much. And because it pronates too much, that tendon of the tip post that tries to stabilize it has to overwork and really ha um, work hard and it compresses against the bone constantly. So, if you're wearing shoes that doesn't support your arch, or actually, you know some of those Nikes that you can take and you can twist it three times? If you're walking around in that, it's like jelly. So your, your tip post has to work really hard then. And you over um, you, you just overwork this injured tendon, and that's why it keeps on being painful. So you've got to wear stable shoes, shoes that doesn't feel like jelly to walk on. Um, also, it's really useful to get some sort of an orthotic in your shoe that gives you arch support. Now, what do I mean with the orthotic? Doesn't have to be fancy. Um, I got these from Superdrug and I have had custom made orthotics in the past. I've actually got rid of them now because they're too hard. And this one works really, really well for me. It's got a hard bit here that keeps the shape of the arch. And this bit is actually quite soft. So it's nice and soft on my tendon, but it's just enough to give me the support that I need. Now, different people may need different things. I've got quite flat arches, so I don't do well with orthotics that's too hard, high. So this one works really well for me. Other people with higher arches may need a bit more support than this. Um, but yes, if you can find a shoe that gives you, or place an orthotic in a shoe that gives you a bit of arch support because it acts like a crutch, then the tip post tendon doesn't have to work that hard and gets time to recover. Um, and definitely, definitely, definitely wear shoes that does not allow your foot to do too much of that. Now, the second reason why shoes are important is because if that shoe is quite tight around your foot, it can also add a low level of compression on that tendon, which can make it feel worse again. So, for instance, if you think of tying your trainers really hard, really tight, can you see that in this area where the tendon runs, you basically have bone, tendon, and, and skin. So when mine was really painful, I only one day out of desperation, because I work 12 hour shifts on some days, I just went and, oh, these, these shoes are too tight, loosened them. And I was amazed at the difference in pain. And I, then I realized that that low level of compression throughout the day was actually enough to irritate my tendon. So go and make sure that you've got supportive shoes 
but at the same time they're not too tight over that part where it's painful that it doesn't compress it any further okay let me just see it looks as if we're getting some comments through facebook's a bit weird with showing me oh there we go hi jill um okay so jill's asking where would i dry needle for this so jill general calf muscle complex so it depends on what muscles are tight when your therapist i always when i do you do dry needling i tend to massage my patients first to some extent to get a feel for the tissue and i just go into all the muscles in the calf that feels tight so it's usually gastroc has massive knots if the tip post is annoyed with life um, as well as soleus a little bit difficult to get to the tip post itself because it's under your nerve bundles and stuff so i don't necessarily go into that but you'll be surprised how uh, much your pain can decrease if you can just get the rest of the calf to relax some people go for the tendon itself i don't tend to do that but it's pre my own preference that but i find if you can just get rid of the calf muscle tightness it already makes a difference um okay so where was i um now that brings me to probably the most important one of the three and that is time on feet if you speak to anybody with tip post tendinopathy they will tell you that standing for long periods of time is one of the most aggravating factors for this condition I find that often my patients can tolerate walking, but if they've got to stand in one place for long periods of time, it's much worse. And that is because, yes, the tip post tendon stops your foot from turning in, but when you're just standing still, it also has an arch supporting duty. So what I do with my patients that come in and they say it's not reacting, it's really painful, painful all the time, I sit them down and I go, right, when are you standing and are you on your feet where you don't have to be. And I get them to cut all of those bits out. So what this means is I don't want you to be inactive. You can still cycle, you can swim, you can be as active as you want, as long as you're not on your two feet. And it's not forever, it's just for a set number of weeks so that that tendon can calm down. So if I can give you an example, with my physiotherapy practice, when I still worked in a physical practice, I had to work 12 hour shifts on a Thursday. Now. I would get my tendons to calm down through the week and then that one shift would put them back so far that I realized I needed to do something. And what I did was there was a lot of treatments that I was doing that I didn't have to do standing up. So I would sit down and do certain things. Every time I, I had to chat to a colleague or something, I would perch on something that I took the weight of my feet. If I found myself waiting for the bus, I would sit down. Or if I couldn't sit down, I would try and lean on her arms so that I take some weight off it. Now this sounds extreme, but honestly people, if those tendons are painful, you need to try and offload them for a solid three to four weeks I found is useful. It's not sit with your feet up, that is not useful because you'll get loads of other issues as well. It's just try and decrease your standing to the level that doesn't actually aggravate your feet. So think about your social events. I know it's annoying, but don't go shopping for long periods of time. Or if you're gonna go shopping, make sure there's reasons for you to sit down or wherever you can sit down and wait for your partner to make a decision about his shoes or whatever um, so think about your social life think about your job i wasn't i couldn't reduce my hours i had to work the hours i worked but there are times in that job that you don't have to be standing i remember one of my young patients she's a keen runner and she was um working at uh like a petting farm i think you call them where you take kids and they can play with with goats and stuff um, and she found that they allowed her to sit down in a chair for long periods during that time because she could do her job still sitting down. It's just that awkwardness of actually going and saying, listen, I've got a problem. I'm going to have to be really careful with this. Can you help me? And in most instances, people are really keen to help. So go and think about how you can offload that tendon that it can settle down. Because if it's not getting better, there's still stuff in your life that's irritating it and you have to pinpoint those things, okay? So to recap those three points, one, if you're doing exercises, they're not helping, then you may as well stop them for a bit. See what happens if you just ease off them totally and don't do specific things to try and strengthen that tendon. Um, same goes for if you're doing squats or things like that, be careful, all of that is weight through the feet. So anything that you're doing standing up, try and reduce that. 
try and cut that out. Go for non-weight bearing exercises for a period of time. Okay, if you can apply that four to six weeks, that's kind of, I, I find my patients start making it or seeing a difference after about three to four weeks. Um, then watch your shoes. They have to be supportive, but not tight. They've got to give it enough space, that tendon, that it's not compressed, even if it's low level compression. And then third, time on feet. Make a plan. You do not have to stand all the time. There are so many times that you can rather sit than stand. We're just in the habit of that. And just explain to people about your feet that they need that for a little bit. You will get back to normal standing again. It can be really useful to work with a physio during this period of time because they can help guide you. They can be an objective pair of ears that can listen to you. Because often when you've had pain for so long, it feels as if it's painful all the time. And you miss the fact that actually you've had four or five good days and it's just because you've had one day of pain that you've now forgotten about it and they can help you identify what is causing that flare up. So if you're finding that you can't identify, go and speak to somebody who's knowledgeable about this and who can really listen to you. But then again, sometimes my patients are really good and they do all of this and it still does, doesn't want to react. I would say then seriously consider investing and going and seeing a sports physician. Why a sports physician versus a consultant or a GP? Because sports physicians, first of all, specialize in sports injuries and tendon type things. They usually can do an ultrasound scan of that area on the day. And that's important because other things can feel like a post-tendinopathy and then actually not be it. So you can have a tear in your tendon, which can feel very similar, but will need different approach. But they also have quite a variety of other types of treatments they can add for you. Um, some patients react really well to shockwave therapy um, to calm the tendon pain down and allow them their rehab. Others, an injection may be of use. Now, I know we don't want cortisone near tendons, but sometimes the sheath is inflamed or there are bursts and things involved, and they can tell that with, um, with ultrasound. And to be honest, in extreme cases, I have seen people have cortisone injections for this. You just have to treat it um, very carefully afterwards. They're usually immobilized in a boot for 10 days or so to protect that tendon afterwards and then very slow level rehab after that. And if that tendon was a tendon that didn't want to react and that's the only way that you can get it to calm down and get the pe person going, it is definitely worth doing, but not if you've not really given it a good go with all the other things first. So remember, if you want to know about how this condition is caused and all the different treatments you can do for it. I've done a different video about that before. I will put that link in the comments in a minute. Um, but if you've got any comments or any questions about this specifically, let me know. Let me have a quick look. So Jill's saying, when I massage under the arch of my foot, I get the pain in my ankle where the tendon is. Is this normal? Um, yes, it can be because to be honest, everything is kind of interlinked in that area and pain can refer to different places. I have had a few people in the past who's had to post tendinopathy plus plantar fasciitis type pain at the same time. Um, but Jill, I know from what you've said in the group as well that you get some tingling in that foot as well. So I think for you, there may be a little bit of a nerve irritation um, that combines in with all of that. So. I would definitely get somebody to just check that out and see what structures are going on. And it may even be more of a reason to go and see a sports physician that they can do a scan and really identify, do you have more than one problem or is it just that one problem? What I will say about the massage under the feet, be careful if you're rolling your foot on a, a golf ball or something that's really hard. I've had people bruise themselves because there's not a lot um, or padding under your foot. There's, you've got your nerves and your tendons and a little bit of padding quite close to your bone. Um, so just be careful that you're not actually irritating things through doing that massage. Um, excellent. That looks as if it's all the comments for the moment. But yeah, if you're watching this on replay or I've said goodbye before you got your comment in, please ask them. I'll keep an eye on the comments. And if you're watching this on YouTube, just tag me. I'll come, I'll come and answer your questions as well. Have a good evening, guys. Take care.